Karibu sana. Welcome to our latest edition of Soma. Leo to Nasoma, 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. We're going to talk about how to overcome evil, right? Or how to overcome the fear of evil. And so we're going to talk about that today. And more specifically, we're going to talk about the fear of evangelism. Let's start from verse 13. It says, Now who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience, so that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. Now, Wakati wana somba biblia, ni kitu muhimu sana kuangalia what is the action words, the doing words, or the verbs that you see in the scripture. And so we can see right here, this, this word here, have no fear of them, nor be troubled. This is a major um, verb that we see right here, some commands that we see Peter is giving here. Now, first of all, we can see this word here, fear, this word troubled. When you ask yourselves, why? What was causing them to have fear and to be troubled? As he writes, the grand context of the book of 1 Peter, Peter is writing to the church in modern-day Turkey, Asia Minor, as he calls it, um, and they were going through severe persecution. They were having really, and they didn't know quite you know, how, to, how to live, how to, how to behave, and Peter kind of basically tells them how to live um, in a hostile environment toward your Christian faith. We can see more specifically in the context here, there's this word here, slandered, um, revile, this word suffer. So the, what was causing them fear was they were being slandered and reviled and they're suffering. And I don't, I don't want to go through this. And so therefore, they now were living in fear. Now, we can see the fear was causing them to, to not be zealous for good, right? They would not be zealous for good. The fear was causing them now to also be quiet in evangelism. We can see right here, it says, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for the reason for the hope that is in you. So this, this phrase here of making a defense, um, you know, is based in talk about the hope that is in Jesus Christ. People would slander you and say, Ah, we need Christo. Ay, quanini, quanini una amini Yesu. And they will revile you and speak evil about you, and it will cause you to suffer. And so there was a fear of people persecuting, you, persecuting them for the sake of their faith. They were troubled by that. And so as a result of that, they didn't want to make a defense um, for the hope that was in Jesus Christ. And Peter was telling them, you know, no, don't let fear overwhelm you. Instead, continue to do what is good. Continue to make a defense. Even he says, you know, but even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. And so he wants to encourage them to be stiff, to be tough, to be willing to suffer for righteousness' sake. And so that would overwhelm the fear that is inside of them. But now as we go through this passage of Scripture, we can understand their fear because they were being slandered, they were being reviled, they were suffering. And that fear now was driving them to not serve Jesus the way that they were supposed to. And so they were being quiet, they were not doing things, and so Peter basically tells them, have no fear. Now, it's easy to say that, but we need to have some encouragement, some ways of how to overcome fear. To overcome fear, you need to have a greater promise. And we can see it right here, this phrase here, you will be blessed. So the way that you overcome fear, according to Peter, is right here, it says, but even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed, right? Jesus even talks about in the Beatitudes, um, blessed are you when you were um, persecuted for my name's sake. So that's in the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5. We can see basically Peter's repeating that sort of thing here. There's a blessing that comes with saying, no matter what, I will honor the Lord. I'm not going to fear people. I'm going to continue to preach the gospel. I'm going to continue to do what the Lord says is good, no matter what. There's a blessing that comes with that. Remember the blessing. Remember that God will bless you whenever you um, decide that I'm not going to let fear overwhelm me. I'm not going to let persecution overwhelm me. My faith in Jesus Christ means more to me. I'm not going to be troubled. 
The other thing you can see right here is this word, but. Peter says, have no fear, then nor be troubled, but we can see there's a contrast here, right? In other words, there's, a, there's something that's here, but there's a contrast to this. So it says, but in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy. So this is really key. Fear, we can see here, is, is a contrast. If there's a fear that, you know, don't, don't have fear, but then he tells them the contrast, but in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy. This is basically Dalia Woga, right? This is how you overcome fear. And if, first of all, fear, he says, in your hearts, um, do not be, or have no fear, then nor be troubled. And fear basically is something that's in our hearts. It's internal. It's something that starts inside of us. So now Peter is talking about basically something inside of you. And so in order to overcome fear as an internal emotion that you feel, you need to fight it somehow internally in your heart. And what he says here is, in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy. Now, Jesus is someone to be revered. And when you see this word here, holy, Christ the Lord is to be revered. Christ the Lord is to be respected. Christ the Lord is separate. Eh? He is holy. And there's an idea with this idea with this with the word holiness of a fear of Jesus. So in other words, you need to have a, a fear of Jesus um, that is so extreme that it even overwhelms the fear of men. Jesus even says in the Gospels, um, you, you should not fear men, but instead fear the one who can throw you into hell, which is basically is him. Jesus is way more powerful than men. And if I set him as holy in my heart, I'm not going to be overwhelmed by fear of men because there's a greater fear of Jesus. To help explain this, let's say that you um, have a, 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 a big brother. And your big brother, he's got big muscles, he's strong, and he's powerful in many sort of ways. And you fear your brother. And if you're, because your brother is big and strong and powerful, he tells you, make sure you behave well. You'll do it because. He's separate from you. He's holy from you in the sense that he's much stronger than you, much more powerful than you. You respect his word. You believe in what he says. And so you're going to listen to your brother. And now, let's say you've got some other bullies in your neighborhood. And these guys now, one on Gavi Baya, they start to slander you. They start to mistreat you. They start to cause you to suffer in sort of ways. And then now they threaten you saying, ah, you know, you know, give us your money or they do something to bully you. And you say, no, I'm not going to do that. You don't really fear them that much because you know my big brother can help protect me. So because you, and you respect him more. And the other thing, too, is you want to make sure that I don't want to do anything, you know, to upset my brother because then he won't just deal with them. He'll also deal with me. So the fear of your big brother will help drive your behavior and help overwhelm your fear of the bullies in the neighborhood. That's kind of the idea that we see right here. Look at Jesus as the one who is holy, the one who is powerful, the one who you need to fear. And when you do that, that's going to now help drive you to do what is good, no matter what, even if it means that you suffer for it. Because at the end of the day, you know you're going to have to deal with the holy Jesus Christ. Next, too, if you look at Jesus and set him apart as holy in your heart, then you're going to be willing to share the gospel no matter what. You're going to, have, you're going to, do, you're going to be able to do some evangelism with people and tell them about the hope that is in Jesus Christ. That's really, really important. We see here. Fear a lot of times drives, causes us to be quiet and not tell people of the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. But Peter says you need to always be prepared, right? No matter what, we need to be ready to share the gospel at all times. And what causes us, we fear persecution. We fear what people will say about us. And I think the real root of the problem is, it's not that the fear of men is so extreme is that our fear of Jesus is not where it needs to be. In order to overcome the fear of men and to come to overcome the fear of evangelism, you need to have a greater fear of Jesus in your heart. Set him apart as holy in your heart. And then remember the blessings too. And that can help you now to, to always be prepared 
to, to make a defense for the hope that is in you in Jesus Christ. But now, we don't just do it anyhow, because if we really truly do set Jesus apart as holy in our heart, then we're going to make sure when we make a defense of the gospel, we're going to do it with gentleness and respect. Because, yes, truth is on the side of the Christian, because Jesus is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. His word is truth. And so we only make sure when we do defend the faith, what we believe, we say it's true. We do it in a holy sort of way because Jesus is holy. We do it with gentleness. We do it with respect. Also, we need to do it with a good conscience, right? I want to have a good conscience. I don't want to just tell people, yeah, there's hope in Jesus Christ, but yet my conscience knows I'm not really living um, in the right sort of way. Um, having a bad conscience can also increase fear in your life because you realize, hey, what am I really going to say hey, to these guys? I need, to, I need to repent and come back to Jesus. So a good conscience is going to help increase um, you know, the, the respect and holiness that you have of Jesus. It's going to help increase your you know, boldness to, to make a defense for the hope that is in you through Jesus Christ. Have no fear of them. And a good conscience is going to help decrease fear. So think about your life. Think about, you know, the blessings. Think about Christ as holy. And that's going to help now increase your boldness to share the gospel and overcome fear. Your boldness to do what is good no matter what. Notice this too. Something else to notice is if we honor Christ the Lord as holy in our hearts, that's something internal. And when if I look at Christ as holy on the internal, then my external life will change. I'll be zealous for what is good. That is something that is external. My life will change. I'll be zealous to, do, to preach the gospel, to make a defense for my hope. That is something that is external. Work on your internal now to change the external. Focus on Jesus. Love him. Look at him as holy in your life. And then when you are slandered and reviled your good behavior in Christ, they're going to be put to shame one day. Remember that. What is going to drive fear out of your heart? To remember that one day people are going to be put to shame because what you believe is the right way is the truthful way. And you're going to now, you're making a defense for Jesus Christ. And even if they don't believe you, one day they will. And they're going to be saying, I, what have I done? This is the right way. Jesus is the truth. I need to, I should have put my faith and trust in him. But so that's remembering these things that at the end of the day, no matter what, you're going to be on the right side of Jesus. Preach the truth and remember that for people. And remember, for it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. Be willing to suffer. Be willing to suffer. If you're willing to suffer, then you're really not going to have a fear of suffering. Be willing to go through that. No matter what, do good. Be willing to suffer for doing good. And doing good is preaching the gospel. It is having good works, good conduct in front of people that honors Jesus and shows them as holy in your life. If, you, if you're willing to suffer, and if you know what's going to happen in the end, that people are going to be put to shame that don't believe in Jesus Christ, you have a good conscience. You, 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 you also have set Christ as holy in your life and your heart. And then you remember the blessings. All of these things are going to help drive out fear for living for Jesus in a hostile world and environment. Focus on these things and remember these things whenever you are fearing to live for Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you today, and I pray, Lord, that you would help us to not be overwhelmed by fear, but remember the blessings that you apart as holy in our hearts. Have a good conscience. And remember what's going to happen at the end of the day. And then also to be willing to suffer no matter what. Because ultimately, Jesus is worth it. He is our Lord. I pray your blessing over all of us that hear this. Give us boldness, Lord. Drive away the fear. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.